So the third module in DeFi Deep Dive uh, focuses on derivatives. And we'll talk about a couple of protocols uh, in some detail, but I want to start with yield uh, protocol. So what is yield protocol? So yield protocol is essentially a way to get a rate that is relatively fixed. We've talked about this uh, before. So think about uh, the yield protocol as creating a condition like a zero coupon bond. And a zero coupon bond works in the following way. And I'll give you a simple example. Uh, suppose the bond has got one year to maturity and the price at maturity or the principal is worth 100. And the price today to actually buy that bond is $90. So if you buy that bond at 90, you hold it for a year, there's no coupon, but at the end of the year, you get 100. And in doing that, if you hold to maturity, you've locked in a rate, and that rate is 11.1%, and you can work that out. Uh, just uh, the 100 divided by 90, uh, subtract 1. Okay, so, so within the DeFi space, these rates are variable, as we'll see. So the yield protocol uh, uses ERC-20 in a very interesting way. And I'm going to take you through the mechanics of an example. It's a little challenging, this example, I must admit, um, but, uh, but it's important uh, for you to basically uh, get it. So we're going to use uh, a token, um, a Y token, that we've kind of talked about these tokens before. We've talked about a C token for compound, an S token for synthetics. So we're gonna use a, like a Y token uh, for this, and we'll go through uh, how, how this actually works with collateral in uh, considerable detail. But um, the key thing is that, that one of the things that is missing uh, currently in the DeFi space is the ability to have some sort of stability uh, in a borrow rate. Okay, so um, let's kind of go through uh, some examples here. Um, suppose you think, that uh, Ether is going to appreciate uh, by 10% over the next year, because that's your view. Um, so what you could do is deposit your ETH into, let's say, Maker, um, and borrow DAI, and pay 3% in terms of uh, an interest rate. And maybe you actually reinvest uh, and buy some more uh, Ether. That's a possibility. And we've been through the mechanics as to how to do that. So if the Ether goes up by 10%, you can do the mechanics that, well, um, your, your asset's gone up by 10%, you have borrowed and you need to pay 3%, so you've got a profit of 7%. Okay, so that, that works out well. The problem is that that rate, that 3%, is not set in stone. It can change. And if that rate, for example, went to 10%, then even if the ETH goes up in value, you have to pay the 10% and you make nothing. Okay, so I'm trying to motivate uh, actually having a rate that is fixed. So you can kind of lock in, at least according to your expectations, uh, kind of a, a known uh, rate. So, and this is what a yield protocol actually uh, does. And I'm just showing uh, here some examples of interest rates. Um, DYDX, which we're about to talk about, um, you can see the average interest rate, the 30-day average, and the range. Uh, indeed, if we go to a longer uh, horizon, and here I'm showing Compound, DYDX, Maker, and Aave, you can see very significant variation 
uh, in these borrowing uh, rates. Okay, so uh, again, it, it makes sense that there's a market for this. So, so indeed, again, uh, in centralized finance, we know this pretty well. So I could take out a fixed rate mortgage and I know what the rate is and I know all of the payments uh, to maturity. Or I could take out a variable rate mortgage. And while that might be cheaper, let's say uh, today, than a fixed rate mortgage, who knows what's gonna happen to the rate uh, in the future. Okay, so, so think of this yield protocol as completing uh, an important uh, market. Okay, so, so basically what we're going to do here, uh, we'll have tokens that are secured uh, by a collateral asset. So of course we need collateral like uh, all of the DeFi uh, protocols. There's gonna be a maintenance margin, and we've talked about this with uh, MakerDAO. And if there's a situation where we drop below the collateralization ratio, the keepers are gonna come in and they will liquidate and essentially pay back uh, the debt on the liquidation. Okay, so this is very similar uh, to what we've seen, but it is a little curious as to how we're gonna get a fixed rate in terms of borrowing. And that's what we're gonna explore uh, next.